This week, I'm here with the recently released Kia Carnival. From here, Ford looks like a Sorrento. But from here back, this is pure Kia Carnival. If I stand here long enough with the key in my pocket, this thing will eventually start to beep. Like this. But inside, this thing has enough space for eight people. Not only that, it's got enough space for a lot of luggage. Maybe not eight people's worth of luggage, but certainly a lot of luggage. You can see how much is in this well that I'm sitting in. And this is where the back seat stows. The seat folds back into this spot and you can see I've got this one stowed so that the floor is almost but not quite flat. You couldn't quite put a mattress in without a bump in it. And there's a power outlet in the back. The third row is well catered for. It's got a USB port on one side plus a couple of cup holders and the same on the other side. There's a reasonable amount of leg room too even with the second row seats back as far as they'll go. I've got the car locked, but with the key in my pocket, all I have to do is touch the button on the side of either of these doors, and they slide back out of the way. The second row seats will tumble forward, and you can get into the third row seats. It's not quite as easy as you might think. You've got to release the lever, oops, without getting your fingers caught, and slide forward. Then there's enough space for a normal-sized person to slide into the back seat. Up the top there on the roof, you can see the seat belt for the center back row. And getting inside is fairly easy. Once I'm here, I've got my elbow rest down so that I can be comfortable on a long journey. There's a sunroof overhead here and another one in the front. It can be operated from here on the center console or both can be operated from the center console on the roof in the front of the car. There's a third set of climate controls for the second row seat and some roof outlets. And as well, a pull-up blind for a little bit of privacy. There are USB outlets on either of the front seats at the back, plus there's some buttons so that you can slide the front seat back and forward from the back seat. The cabin is a triumph of simplicity. Kia says it's luxurious, but I'm not sure I'd use the word luxurious but I would certainly use the term well-appointed. I'm usually not a fan of imitation wood, but I think this looks great. There's a large screen and another smaller screen between the two driver's dials. There's no heads-up display, sadly. Down below, you can open each of the side doors or the rear tailgate, or you can turn the power doors off. The steering wheel holds controls for the lane centering and the lane assist, the smart cruise control, and this scrolls through the functions on the center LCD. And over on the left-hand side are the audio controls, including Kia's favorite button. You can program anything to that that you like. All of the controls are touch, except for a couple of knobs for tune and power and volume. The central section is the front climate control. As you can see, you can also control the rear climate control from here as well. There's two zones in the front, one zone in the rear. Below that, there are a feast of USBs. The middle one is the one that connects to the infotainment system. There's also a Qi wireless charger. You can see my phone's in there as we speak. And there's a little bin below. Behind that is the gear selector, drive mode control, auto hold, and electric brake. And last but not least are the controls for the heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, park sensors, and the parking camera, press that. And up on the front comes the camera that you can have selectable functions. As well as that, the rear mirrors dip when you reverse. Parking something this huge is surprisingly easy. You simply can't hit anything unless you're really, really trying. There's also some cool Bose speakers and the sound system sounds absolutely sensational, especially in a vehicle this big. Well, let's see what it's like to actually drive. I've put it in drive by using the dial, and when we set off, the brakes let go automatically. You can see now that the camera's given me a very wide view. There's no way you can hit anything when you're reversing. 
I often get asked how I can drive such big cars so confidently. And the reason is that the technology makes it easy. The eight-speed automatic, we've seen that before in other Kias. And this V6 petrol engine is as smooth as silk. Now, unfortunately, none of the carnivals are all-wheel drive. Partially, it's because the combination of the V6 motor and the eight-speed transmission can't take all-wheel drive in right-hand drive. Can take it in left-hand drive, but not right-hand drive. The diesel can, and I wonder why they didn't bring that out in an all-wheel drive. The ride is so beautifully smooth too. There's McPherson struts at the front and multi-links at the back. Handling on tight corners, it is a big car, it's almost 2100 kilos and in anyone's language that is a whole lot of weight. It doesn't handle like a big car. Unless you're on really tight bends, as I was the other day on the old Pacific Highway. And I had the lane control on and the lane centering on. That was a warning me that there was, I was too close to a car in front. It thought I couldn't see it. I could, but anyway, I'd rather, rather it be safe than sorry. Getting back to my story, the lane control was trying to force me back into a position in the lane that I didn't want to be in. I should have turned it off in tight corners. And it was holding, 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 and then it let go, and that upset the car a bit. It's not unique to this car. I've struck it in other brands as well. It really annoys me. And put that up. And I was directed this morning to a video, and the video was a highways test in the US and they were talking about autonomous emergency braking and in particular pedestrian detection and it showed a couple of Kias and Hyundai's running over the pedestrian and the Ford and so forth not quite stopping in time etc etc and most of the rest of the brands BMW and so forth Mercedes stopped in time and I pointed out to the viewer that the Kia and the Hyundai that they tested didn't have pedestrian detection, so it was never going to work. I like the engine sound a lot. A lot. It sounds brilliant. The transmission getting up to speed is beautifully smooth. You won't get into the top gears though until you get to mm, 100 kilometres an hour. It is extremely economical and this 70 litre tank is telling me that with a little around town driving, I've still got 600 kilometres left. I've just activated the lane centering so the carnival is now keeping me centred in the lane and I've now activated the smart cruise control. So that's keeping me a set distance from the car in front. The car in front slows down, I slow down too. It does have Q Assist, which is particularly handy. And I use that a lot on cars that have it uh, because I live in Sydney and there's a lot of traffic. That really takes the trouble out of high traffic situations. There's two memories too for the driver's seat. So you can always have it just so. The car in front changed lanes particularly close to me and the big Kia slowed down. It said, you're too close. You're too close to the car in front. You're duffer. As far as all the rest of the safety gear goes, we've got blind spot monitoring and that is active blind spot monitoring. If I try to change lanes, it will say, no, no, you can't change lanes. Go back into your own lane. The lights and wipers, of course, are fully automatic. Uh, the headlights even have a high beam function. But to wrap up, I think if you look around the cabin, you'll see that it is really lovely. I love the stitching up here on the dash. Now this is quite soft. This, of course, this timber look plastic is hard. But this plastic down here, that's quite hard too. I thought they could have made that a little bit softer. 
down here on the doors, that's all so hard. That's all this week from Kia Carnival. I really like this car. Okay, it's not aimed at me. It's aimed for someone that's got a really big family or a business. Nonetheless, it's incredibly handsome, does exactly what it says in the box, and is good value. Whether or not it's luxury, I'll leave that for you to decide. As always, if you've liked the film, leave a comment, hit like, bubble just there to subscribe.